Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, I want to talk about kiss and run fusion, and I want to talk about some of the experiments that we can do that sort of demonstrate kiss and run fusion. Okay, so kiss and run fusion. So the structure of this video will be uh, that we start off with just a basic discussion of what kiss and run fusion is. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll go through three different experiments which try and sort of show kiss and run fusion. Okay, right. So, let's start off with what kiss and run fusion actually is. So if we have a uh, synaptic vesicle here, okay, which is docked at a presynaptic membrane. So let's say this is the presynaptic membrane here. Then when the signal comes for this uh, vesicle to actually fuse, with uh, the presynaptic membrane, what seems to happen is that initially you get a small tube forming between the synaptic vesicle membrane and the plasma membrane. And this small lipid tube here, this is known as a fusion pore. So you get the opening of a small fusion pore between the synaptic vesicle that is docked at the presynaptic membrane and the presynaptic membrane itself. Okay, now this fusion pore is very, very small, but it is capable of conducting neurotransmitter molecules through it, basically. So, a uh, neurotransmitter can start leaving the synaptic vesicle lumen here. So if these are the synaptic vesicle, uh, the synaptic vesicle's contents, the neurotransmitter here, you can get the movement of neurotransmitter through this fusion pore and the release of some of that neurotransmitter into uh, the synaptic cleft. Okay, now what can then happen is you can either go on to full fusion, i.e. the entire uh, the entire vesicle membrane fuses with the presynaptic membrane like so, and then dumps the neurotransmitter contents here into the synaptic cleft. Okay, so that's full fusion there. So this is full fusion. Or what can happen is a phenomenon known as kiss and run. So what can happen is it forms this fusion pore for a little while. Some of the lipid in the synaptic vesicle will move into the presynaptic membrane, but then what will happen is the fusion pore will close again. Okay, so it will close back down, and then you'll have a, the synaptic vesicle still docked to the me membrane, uh, the presynaptic membrane, because all the docking machinery is still there. But the synaptic vesicle will now be slightly smaller because a little bit of the lipid that was um, making up the phospholipid bimer of the synaptic vesicle has now gone into the plasma membrane here. So, uh, that ret so it returns to the closed state here, and now what can happen is it can go back to the, f it can form another fusion pore, so let me, rather than draw it as a cycle, I think I'll just keep going. So here, it, it's formed another fusion pore here, because it's not really a cycle, because the synaptic vesicle is going to get gradually smaller and smaller, so it's not going back to this state here. So it forms another fusion pore, another bit of the lipid goes into the plasma membrane, a bit more of the neurotransmitter is released, maybe. Okay, and then maybe that goes on either to full fusion, or indeed it can close again. Okay, and when it closes again, it will be slightly smaller again, so let's have it here. And then it can continue this process, it can continue opening this fusion pore, providing a little bit of neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft, and also a little bit of the lipid into the plasma membrane, making the synaptic vesicle smaller, both in its lipid surface area and also in its neurotransmitter contents, um, but just gradually sort of seeping in like that, and that's the sort of kissing of the uh, synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane, and then it runs back again when it goes back to the closed state. And this will continue whilst the calcium signal continues. So this is um, a sort of non-classical um, phenomenon. We always used to think that, you know, synaptic vesicles, when they fused, they fused fully, and that was the only way they could do it. Now we know that this kiss and run phenomenon is really there, that these synaptic vesicles can just sort of kiss the plasma membrane, provide a little sort of spittle of neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft, as, long, as well as a bit of its membrane into the plasma membrane. Okay, and that's the kiss and run fusion, basically. Okay, so what sort of evidence do we have for this? 
Well, basically, what we can do is we can actually see this happening, and we can use a phenomenon known as uh, total internal. Ref uh, sorry, we can use a a technique, an experimental technique known as total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. Which don't worry, I will uh, ref explain to you. Total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. So I'm going to describe an experiment that can be done in order to show this kiss and run fusion, which uses total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy, as well as a cleverly picked dye, fluorescence microscopy. Okay, right. Now, total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy, because it's a total mouthful, it's often abbreviated to tear turf or turf um, in, in full. Often people just refer to it as total internal reflections fl fl reflection fluorescence, i.e. turf, because it's got like a cooler acronym if it's just turf, but in full it would be turf n. Okay, right, so let's describe this experiment. So firstly, who did this experiment, because it's always nice to know who did the experiment, so that you can write about it if you ever need to. So this experiment was done by a guy known as Stephen, uh, well, I think it was actually Stevens, okay? So, Stevens et al, this is, and I think he did it in around 2000. Okay, so Stevens. So, uh, what we now want to do is see what he actually did. So, he wanted to see this kiss and run fusion, basically. So, he took an axon terminal of a neuron, okay? Or maybe he took a synaptosome, I don't actually know, but basically he took a neuron, okay? So we'll put our neuron axon terminal here. And what he's going to do is he's going to stimulate the neuron to release its neurotransmitter, and he wants to see this um, kiss and run fusion. So here's the synaptic vesicle with its neurotransmitter in. Now, how exactly are you going to be able to visualize this um, kiss and run fusion? Well, basically, he came up with a rather ingenious way of doing it. So what you can do is you can make a probe known as synaptofluorin. So, this is known as synapto... and then it has a pH here, fluorin, like this. Now, basically, this is a protein which, which sits in the membrane of synaptic vesicles. So, here is synaptofluorin, and basically, it's a modified synaptobrevin 2 protein. So, what you do is you take the synaptobrevin 2 protein, which we've got here, Okay, so let's say this is our synaptobrevin 2 protein in orange here. And to turn it into a synaptofluorin molecule, what you do is you tag it with green fluorescence proteins. So you stick on the end of the synaptobrevin a green fluorescence protein. Okay, and then this chimera of synaptobrevin 2 with green fluorescence protein, this is what's known as synaptofluorin. Okay? And this pH bit in the middle here, this is not just by accident that they've put that in. They put that pH in because it's a very pH-sensitive dye. Uh, well, it's a very pH-sensitive fluorophore, okay? Now, we know that synaptic vesicles, they have an incredibly high proton concentration. Okay? So remember that in the membrane of synaptic vesicles, you have a transporter, a prime reactive transporter, known as the V-ATPase, okay? And this stands for the vesicular proton ATPase, so this is the vesicular proton ATPase. And the job of this vesicular proton ATPase is to move protons out of the cytoplasm into this, uh, synap well, into this synaptic vesicle, so it's going to move protons one by one into the synaptic vesicle, and every time it moves a proton, it has to couple that movement of the proton to the hydrolysis of an ATP molecule. So it takes ATP, adenosine triphosphate, hydrolyzes it down to adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and an inorganic phosphate, and with the energy that's released from that hydrolysis of ATP, it uses that energy to move a proton into the synaptic vesicle. So that's what the VATPase is doing all the time. Now, why? Why does it do that? Well, it's because you want a very high proton concentration in here, so that you can then have 
secondary active transporters, which allow the protons to move back out, and then they themselves will push in the neurotransmitter, so NT for neurotransmitter. So there are secondary active transporters also in the membrane of the vesicle, which use this proton gradient, basically, to transport their uh, neurotransmitter into the synaptic vesicle. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.